I know I talk about this one ex in particular a lot, but this dude gave me so much source material. Bear with me. I'd never been canoeing before, and my boyfriend at the time, we'll call him Eric, he had been invited on a church float trip. Now, church for me is tricky. There's some history there. I'm not going to get into it now. But I decided, okay, I'll go with you on your church float trip. He said it would be just the two of us in the canoe. He already knew how to steer it, use the oars, whatever. And I was picturing like a romantic um, Ariel and Prince Eric. Holy shit. Didn't mean to do that. I was picturing a Little Mermaid and Prince Eric situation. Do you mind? Because it was a church-sanctioned trip, there was going to be a lot of youth group kids there. And I was fine with that until he told me that the youth group kids like to tip people's canoes over. We're from the Ozarks, and I feel like Ozarkians especially should know better than to mess around in the rivers because water moccasins. You don't mess with the water snakes. They'll kill you. But Eric assured me, he let these kids know that, you know, we weren't kids. We were in our early 20s. Please don't mess with us. We're just trying to enjoy the float trip like a couple of young adults. And apparently they agreed to this. The day of the float trip was beautiful. It was bright, sunny, hot. It was literally the perfect day for this trip. So we get in our canoe and we are going along very peacefully. We are a little bit slower than the rest of the group. But like I said, it was really peaceful and it was nice. That is, of course, until we got to some of the more rapid parts where the river would start to bend and go a little bit faster and we would crash into a bluff. This happened way too many times for somebody who said that they knew how to steer a canoe. And I was all scraped and bruised. Like, I, I was not having a good time, y'all. Even other canoers that were further ahead were yelling back at us like, you need to steer, you need to steer. And I'm like, yeah, duh. I don't know why he's not doing it. He says that he knows how to do it. He said he was practically an expert at canoeing. At one point, we had wrecked so hard that he lost one of the oars. Like, it was gone. Five hours into this trip, and I'm miserable. I want to go home. I'm not having fun anymore. I'd say the fun had lasted an hour, and the rest of the trip was just awful. And when I think it cannot possibly get any worse, a bunch of youth group kids emerge. They all had these really sinister looks on their faces, too. They weren't smiling. Nobody was laughing or giggling. It was like this malice, like, we're going to kill you. And I start yelling, like, don't tip us. Please don't tip us. We're having a really bad time. And Eric doesn't say a word. He does not say a word. And they just come and they shove us over. And we're in a really shallow spot at this time. So again, I'm crashing into rocks. I was so mad. And they, they don't even run away. They just walk away. And so we're getting gravel out of the canoe. We flip it back over and we get in. And I'm just like, I just want to go home so bad. So we're getting to the very last bend before we meet the rest of the people on our float trip. We're the last ones now. They're waiting for us to catch up. Eric's rowing with his one pathetic little oar. And not far ahead, off of a gravel bar, we see a bunch of like tubers, not like potatoes, but people in inner tubes. So these people who have parked their tubes on this gravel bar are helping people out of the river. And a couple of them yell to us, you need to steer to the left, steer to the left. And Eric's just like ignoring them. It's like he doesn't even hear them. And I say, they're, they're saying steer to the left, like something's wrong. And he said, I know what I'm doing. Well, the closer we get, they start to panic. They're like, there's a snag under the water. And I'm like, oh my God, like that, I, I know how dangerous that can be. And the water, it looks calm, except there's this itty bitty hump of water just going kind of fast over the hump. And we hit that hump really hard. And Eric is able, he gets sucked under and he's able to grab onto this log. It's a whole tree that's down all across the river. And me and the canoe get sucked down under. The suction of that snag was so powerful, it took my shoes and socks off. They're gone. They're with Jesus now. One of the two people, they were able to pull me out, but there was no way that canoe was coming out. There was so much water in the canoe. It's down on the bottom of the riverbed. And so many people are trying to pull it, but it's just the current's too powerful. The, the snag is too much. The canoe had to stay. Finally, this nightmare ends, and the ride home is so incredibly awkwardly silent. And when I get home, my mom and my stepdad are horrified because it looks like I've literally been in a car accident. I'm bruised. I've got scratches on the side of my face. I've got bruising and scratches all down the left side of my body. Weirdly enough, 
the right side of my body was completely fine. My shoes and socks are gone. Like I just, I looked bad and I was not in a good mood. And I told them about what happened. And my stepdad was so mad. He was like, you said that you knew how to steer. You knew what you were doing. And Eric said, well, I've watched my dad do it a thousand times. I just figured since he knew how to do it, I would automatically know how to do it. I'm like, you're not a Borg. That ended up being a long running theme with him, him thinking that because his dad knew something that he would magically also have this knowledge. It was really weird. Later on, the youth group kids let me in on a little secret. Eric had specifically asked them to find us and tip us, even though he had told me that they weren't going to do it. The idea was that once they tipped us, he would save me and look like a big, strong hero. Like, can we just not play with people's safety? So yeah, while I'd like to say Eric is not the sharpest tool in the shed, he was definitely a tool. But at the end of the day, my self-esteem was so shot that I still continued this relationship with him. And that's why I have so much to talk about. Anyway, see you all next week. Dude literally just sneezed on my face.